In this video, we will discover the formula for the inverse of a matrix product, and that will make for a very intriguing discussion. Number one, it will be our first discussion about matrices in which I won't draw a single matrix. I will only write letters and use an algebraic way of thinking. So in a sense, we have arrived. We're there. We're doing very complicated things in very simple ways. That's the power of algebra, and we have it now. Number two, this formula will say something very fundamental, not only in linear algebra, not only in all of mathematics, but actually something very fundamental about life. You'll see. And finally, the way this formula works out will be very neat. And you'll have to wait a few minutes to see that as well. So let me set up the problem. Suppose we have two matrices A and B. Both are invertible. And somehow we know the inverse of both, or each. We know A inverse, and we know B inverse. Maybe we calculated those inverses. Maybe we somehow know them in a different way but we know those inverses. And now we're faced with the task of calculating the inverse for their product, AB. Now what we could do is pursue the inversion algorithm by writing identity next to AB and performing Gaussian elimination. That will work, but of course that's quite time consuming. And maybe we can save a lot of time by using the two inverses that we already know. Maybe we can combine them in such a way that will produce the inverse of AB, and that will result in a fewer number of operations. So let me begin by saying what the formula is not. So if we know A inverse and B inverse, the inverse of AB is not A inverse, B inverse. It is not this formula. It could not be this formula. Now, two nodes. Uh, what complicates matters here just a little bit is non-commutativity. If the matrix product was commutative, then this actually would be the inverse of AB. But because it's not commutative, things are just a little bit more complicated and a whole lot more interesting. So here is an example from life. I promised something fundamental about life. So here is something about life that will tell us and of course it also has to do with lack of commutativity, that this could not possibly be the answer. I will now perform two actions. Each one has a clear inverse, and then I will perform the inverses in this order, and we'll see whether I got back to where I started from. The two actions are take a step forward, and of course the inverse of that action is take a step back, and the second action will be turn left, and of course, the inverse of that action is turn right. Now, let me take a step forward and then turn left. Take a step forward, turn left. Now, I will perform the inverses of those actions. I first took a step forward, so I'll take a step back, and then I will turn right. Take a step back, turn right. Did I get back to where I started from? Absolutely not. That's because and that's why this formula just could not be true. If you're thinking of matrices as actions, there is a very particular way in which we undo our actions. And of course, we have to undo them in reverse. If I take a step forward and then turn left, if I want to get back to where I was, I have to do the inverses of my actions in opposite order. I first have to reverse turning left, and then I have to reverse taking a step forward. So I do perform the inverses of each one of those operations, but I do it in reverse order. So the inverse of AB is actually B inverse, A inverse. How neat is that? Yes, it is a little bit more complicated, but it's just a whole lot more interesting. Now, now that we've obtained this result intuitively, it deserves to be perfect. Let me give you a formal algebraic proof that this actually works. And that proof is neat in its own way. And usually I designate proofs to separate videos, but this will be so short and so neat that it really belongs in this video. So I will erase the inverses and I will say, suppose now we have the product AB. I will now show you, I will now show that if I multiply this product, AB, by B inverse, A inverse, 
the result will be identity. And you should really be savoring the power of algebra. Matrix multiplication is a complicated operation that involves a lot of operations, multiplications, additions, and so forth. There's a lot of housekeeping going on when you multiply two matrices, but we're taking the big picture view on what's going on and everything is nice, simple, and algebraic. Or maybe I should say algebraic, nice and simple. Let me multiply the product AB by B inverse, A inverse. And do you see what's happening? Of course you do. There's B next to B inverse. And what's that? That's identity. And when you have identity in the middle, it gets absorbed on either into A inverse or into A. The, in, the identity, when it multiplies any matrix, it leaves that matrix unchanged. So you can either say AI equals A or IA inverse equals A inverse. In either case, this identity simply drops out and we're left with A, A inverse. And once again, we have a matrix touching its inverse. And when that happens, we get the identity matrix. And because this times this is the identity matrix, this combination must be the inverse of this. And that's exactly what this formula is saying, that the inverse of AB is B inverse, A inverse. Now, a question which will be very simple to answer. I'll even sneak it in here. What is the inverse of a triple product? And of course, by the same reasoning, it will be the three inverses in reverse order. And of course, this works for four matrices, five matrices, any number of matrices. The inverse of a product of any number of matrices is the product of the inverses in the opposite order. Just another metaphor from life. If you think about demolishing this room, let's think about how it was built. Someone first framed out this wall, then somebody put on drywall, then I came in and mounted this blackboard. If you were to demolish this room, what order would you undo those operations? Of course, you'll take off the board first, then you'll rip out the drywall, and then you'll cut the studs. There is no way to do the demolition by cutting the studs first, then removing the drywall, and then removing the blackboard. It just doesn't work like A inverse, B inverse, C inverse. It's always C inverse, B inverse, A inverse. When you're undoing actions, you're always undoing them in the opposite order. The fundamental reasons for everything is non-commutativity, and everything here is pretty intuitive if you think of matrices and a matrix product as actions.